Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great. Today I'm going to show you a selection of extreme macro shots of about a half a dozen species. The majority of these subjects were smaller than a centimeter, or in some cases even significantly smaller than a centimeter. I use my Laobot 25mm ultra macro lens with my Canon 80D to capture these images, and also in some cases I had to use an assist light, especially when I went beyond the 2.5x base magnification all the way up to 4.4.5x. So I used my Bowling P1 RGB light. I also had the special ring light that was specifically made for this ultra macro lens but I haven't been using that much especially because it creates unpleasing specular highlights especially on highly reflective surfaces such as the exoskeleton of an ant. Anyway let's get those images up and I will talk about each a little. Before jumping to the images, I briefly like to talk about the exposure settings. The fixed aperture I used was f11, but because of the high magnification ratio, you have to take diffraction into account and refer to the effective aperture instead. So at 2.5x magnification, that was f38.5, while at 4x, it was f55, which is an extremely small aperture, where without using an assist light, the viewfinder would have been completely dark. The shutter speed varied between 180th and 100th of a second and the ISO range was between the base ISO 100 and kept at 500 as I didn't want to push the noise levels further on the APS-C sensor of the ATD. In this first series you can see a garden jumping spider that I captured on a small succulent. The garden jumping spider is medium sized, brown to orange brown in colors with white patterns throughout the whole body. The larger spiders are usually darker in color and the patterns may vary between individuals. Males have slender abdomen and larger pedipalps. As most other spiders, females are more commonly seen than males. They build retreats between leaves or by partly rolling a leaf with silk. Their retreats usually have opening at both ends and they hide in there at night and during winter. Our next subject is a cobweb spider. This cobweb spider belongs to the family called tango web spiders. I haven't found much information on the genus itself. I've seen them around uh, quite a bit at the local reserve on small shrubs. They are great at camouflage and most are pretty small, about a centimeter in length. The one that I captured in this shot was hiding in a small crevice on a wooden fence, pretty much in the dark, so I had to up the ISO quite a bit. In our next macro shot, you can see a species of the genus Cryptolemus, which consists of predatory beetles of the family Coccinellidae, whose larvae and adults mostly prey upon scale insects on ornamental plants. It was extremely small once again, and the tiny bristle-like hairs covering almost its entire body looked very interesting. The next few shots are of tiny globular springtails, no larger than a few millimeters. I captured all of these in our backyard. Springtails are named for a forked jumping organ called the furcula, found on the fourth abdominal segment. It is folded beneath the body and held in place by a special structure called the tenaculum. When the tenaculum is released, it causes the furcula to snap down against the substrate and it flips the springtail into the air. This device is a very effective adaptation for avoiding predation. If you'd like to learn more and watch these springtails in action, then you should check out this video as well. The next several shots are of a quirky looking mite called a snout mite. In terms of size, they are usually medium to large sized predatory mites. However, the one that I captured was barely visible with the naked eye and wasn't larger than 1 to 2 millimeters. They are known to inhabit soil, leaves, as well as intertidal rocks. They can be easily recognized by their elongated snout like narosoma, which comprises the mouth and feeding parts, as well as the pedipalps bearing two long terminal CT. There are two common snout mites in Australia, the spiny snout mite and the pasture snout mite, and both of them are generalist predators that can be effective in reducing pest populations in pastures, but not so much in crops. Both species have orange bodies and eight orange legs and can be distinguished from pest mites because of the fast speed at which they move. The next few shots are of minuscule millipedes that I could barely spot with the naked eye either. They belong to the family called Julidae, containing more than 600 species in around 20 genera. These were definitely juveniles and looked quite translucent with interesting red spots on the side. I only counted three simple eyes called the ocelli on each of these specimens, which is indicative of them not having reached adulthood yet. Our very last subject is a mono ant. Mono ants are considered to be one of the more important groups of ants because of their widespread distribution, diversity, variety of morphological and biological characteristics. Some species don't even remotely resemble one another, having completely different shapes and sizes. 
Most ends of this genus nest in rotting wood under rocks or in the soil. Some species are scavengers while others are seed collectors. This particular species that you can see in these images includes a high proportion of vegetable material in its diet and has been known as a minor pest, for example in orchards. Many species of this genus produce special venom-containing alkaloids, which they use as a defense from predators, and 43 species in this genus are known in Australia. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like learning about your subjects in the world of macro, I suggest you check out this uh, playlist. I'm sure you will find something that you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and see you all very soon in the next one. Oh,